Welcome to Digital Transformers, the show that connects you with what you need to build, manage, and operate your digital supply chain. Join your host in a timely discussion on new and future business models with industry-leading executives. The show will reveal global customer expectations, real-world deployment challenges, and the value of advanced business technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, and robotic process engineering. And now, we bring you Digital Transformers. Hello, this is Kevin L. Jackson, and welcome to Digital Transformers on Supply Chain Now. Today, I have the incredible pleasure of teaming up once again with the illustrious Sally Eves to discuss our perspectives on the RSA conference in, in 2023 in San Francisco. Welcome, Sally. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and what an amazing event in person that was, wasn't it? I think like the 32nd in a row. But from our experience, I think from everybody I'm hearing who's been at that event, I think it was kind of a whole new level um, in uh-huh. terms of just the innovation, bringing together different people, but also the collaboration that we saw, kind of the good guys coming together for cybersecurity, you know? So yeah, an amazing, amazing couple of weeks um, that we've had at the event and beyond, because again, these are trends set to last. Yeah, I, th- I think I'm going to pat ourselves on the back for the three a day. Did you really enjoy that? Uh, we multi- actually live stream multiple events every day, uh, from the hotel to the booth to the evening recollections at the bar. That was great. Uh, we pointed out each day's learnings, uh, the conference highlights and crucial, crucial proof points supporting why we believe AT&T is delivering a new networking standard to their customers. Wasn't that fun? Oh, it was, honestly. And those examples you gave of how we did that, the three a day, I, I love that. It's going to stick forever, <laughs> I think. But, uh, but we took the audience with us, didn't we? And that's what I loved mm-hmm. about that. It was kind of starting our day, bringing the audience in, as you said, at the hotel, sessions, kind of our highlights, being at the booth, and then our recollection down at the hotel afterwards. And that's what people do, isn't it? It, it really yeah. is a genuine reflection of an event. But doing that live and being able to share that live and, and kind of bring everybody with us, I thought was an amazing thing. And also, again, you know, the theme of RSA this year, Stronger Together, I think it really mm-hmm. reflected that as well. You know, what we were doing together and collaborating, but also the cybersecurity community as a whole as well. It really felt quite a special moment of coming together. So, yeah, loved it. It's a short answer. I think it was, it was actually a, a very broad together. I mean, in the evenings, yes. I would get uh, uh, comments and, and emails about, you know, what they saw and, and, and the, the audience was there with us. It was, it was, it was exactly. really amazing. Definitely. And that first definitely. day... Yeah, yeah. And um, so each day was different. We, we sort of had a theme for each day. And like the f- first day we were talking about uh, security in the network and how the cyber threats were really growing, how organizations had to really limit their vulnerabilities. And, uh, and they all start with the network. Absolutely. It's so, so true. And you're right. I think across the three days, key points to look at. And uh, I think maybe my first one is around the expertise, you know, whose business, you know, mm-hmm. I think we saw that particularly on day one. I think that really supported all we were learning about. I mean, so many interactions up close you know, at the booth, but obviously in other areas as well. And I think it really reflected as well um, how AT&T has supported the community. You know, business continuity and planning would be a great example of that. And we got to learn and see, didn't we, firsthand how at and supported the kind of the navigation of that experience and particularly the rabbit changes that um, produce really in the business environment so really interesting there a couple of things that caught my eye was for example iot consulting specialists that mm-hmm. expertise and how that really embedded solution development right through you know from solution development and, and the roadmap that produced right through um, to implementation um, so it's massively important kind of that move from proof of concept right through to mass deployment and we saw again technology expertise business all coming together to deliver that. And we also saw other areas too, didn't we, in terms of uh, customer collaboration, market sensing, but also bringing out expertise externally, such as analyst relationships too. So all of that coming together was definitely some of my kind of highlights from day one and kind of the result of that. It's that software defined cloud connections that we we got to really drill into um, and how that works kind of friction free, I would say, with AT&T network services. And it gives those two things, security and reliability hand in hand. And of course, as 
well, we got to see how voice and reliable um, collaboration solutions using cloud um, was really making a massive difference. And again, that integration piece into the AT&T network made that all happen. So kind of embedded by design springs to mind for me. Well, one of the things, customer services, that uh, AT&T really stepped up uh, over the pandemic. In fact, uh, the automation that they put into the network resulted in like 97% of all of the managed service requests being resolved in the first interaction. And they had these real, this newly launched uh, express tickets. They were actually able to handle over 30,000 tickets uh, per month. And that the focus on customer experience is, is, is really outstanding. Uh, they have, uh, you can order a dedicated internet or a VPN or the IP flex uh, in, in as little as 30 minutes. And they're, they're consultants, and you, you talked a bit about that. They had real expertise from architecting and designing and integration deployment optimization of, of, of the network and, and specialized knowledge of the industry, you know, supply chain, manufacturing, transportation, uh, retail, financial services, they, they really were able to identify issues, uh, take immediate action and satisfy the customer really, really fast. Absolutely. It's that active intelligence, isn't it? It really mm -hmm. is that active intelligence help giving you kind of that agency to act based on all the different elements you were describing there and with real focus to the different verticals too. I think that's massively important. And again, it brings to, to the fore that depth and breadth of expertise um, alongside the technology itself. And kind of in other words, it's teams that are dedicated to serving the business, isn't it? And, and again, we mentioned already about business continuity and planning, and it really was that responsiveness of AT&T alongside network work connectivity for work from home or, or work from anywhere that I think made such a difference. And you know, we talked about proof points earlier as well. And I think the investment that went into this was staggering. And it really shows how that pays off. It's, I think it was around $650 million that went into a network disaster recovery program alone. And again, the difference that, that made in terms of restorative communications to areas affected by disasters. Obviously, we've had the pandemic, but there's many other examples of, of, of world issues at the moment as well. It keeps people connected. It's a massive, massive Massive difference and huge, hugely important to build trust as well. But the other thing for me that I think is really interesting here, obviously we can reflect back about business continuity planning, particularly at moments like that. But the the, the needs keep coming, don't they? You know, as we're looking ahead, particularly around cybersecurity, but other areas as well. These threats, these challenges, they continue to evolve, and they need to evolve at pace in terms of how we react and get ahead of that. So for me, we're seeing say organisations needing their infrastructure to be more active, um, and I would say more than that to be kind of the anchoring role should we say for protecting the yeah, enterprise yeah. today and then you know especially in our multi-cloud world and kind of work from anywhere world isn't it and <laughs> again you know network up isn't it is the way to really embed this i think well you mentioned uh, uh, uh this multi-cloud world i mean if you if you have an operator across multi-cloud it really is the the network that enables you to have access to that data and it was it was highlighted on day two <laughs> that number, 594 petabytes of traffic. That's a million gigabytes. You know, I, I was trying to think, try to get my head or, uh, around that. Uh, it was like the equivalent of streaming nearly 40 million two hour long movies. And, and they laid over 60,000 miles of fiber in 2022 alone in the U.S. So that fiber was actually accessible by over 40 million, 4 million um, business locations uh, across the, the uh, United States. And the mobility network, you know, the highlight of the, uh, of the whole network of security is the um, way, the synergy between the wireless network and the fiber network. You know, you with mobility, you get like more redundant connectivity than the industry standard. 
Absolutely, absolutely. I think the numbers that you mentioned there, Kevin, that five nine four. I'm never going to forget that one. Absolutely, that, that, that that's emboldened in my brain. But but really, in this particular case, the numbers do say so much, don't they? In terms of yes. demonstrating the investment, but also the impact that's bringing as well. I think for very much it's that phrase that we brought to life. I, I, I like to think about this is a new standard for network um, that what we're seeing here, and it's kind of also a bit of a tech marriage, I would say, in some sorts yeah. as well, because it's fiber five G, the perfect pairing, isn't it? That we saw there um and I, I know there's there's a lot more stats around this as well but you know at&t has got the largest wireless network in the world i think it's 288 million people um mm. but also we've got the 10th anniversary here of fiber for at&t right this year as well so if we couple all of the the wireless network reach and how that's being supported and the coverage that brings but with the fiber advances as well you know again at&t is now the largest fiber internet provider i think four million business locations more numbers there as well and it's <laughs> Growing. There's a huge evidence base around that. So yeah, this coming together, this like perfect pairing, as I like to call it, is really one of complementary strengths, isn't it? It's tech and its coverage combined. Yeah. Um, and again, supported by massive investment, $140 billion, I think, between 2018 to 2022 alone. So exciting trajectory here, I would say. Well, I think that is really a, a differentiator for any business that's leveraging AT&T. The, 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 the way that the wireless accessibility and uh, fiber bandwidth, as well as the redundancy that uh, provides. You know, you know, uh, AT and T has has expanded to over twenty four thousand cities uh, in the United States, and that reliable wireless network covers um, almost three million square miles, and the five G network with that rollout over. 288 million people are, are covered uh, by 5G. Actually, I'm out here in uh, LA right now. So that, that $5 billion investment in 5G spectrum really is paying off. And as a business, as a business customer of AT&T, like I said, that gives you a differentiator in your business. Absolutely, absolutely. And also when you consider the payoff of that investment as well. Mm -hmm. So when fiber and 5G come together, again, this is like a multi-decade lifespan. Um, so you're investing in your future and your future readiness around connectivity too. So that's an, an investment that pays multiple dividends, if you see what I mean. So I think that's really, really exciting. And again, I, I love the stats you brought to the fore there. Again, I think it really kind of proves what's happening here. Um, and you know, I like to talk about pillars, Kevin, don't you? It's one of my, yeah. one of my little things where I'm talking about <laughs> development. Dream. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got four. I've got four oh, this time. Wow. Um, yeah, I've, I've got four pillars that kind of underpin the different areas that we're talking about. You know, what, what's underneath this? What's underneath this new standard for networking? And a couple of them we've mentioned a lot already, I think, in terms mm -hmm. of that next generation technology, and particularly its integration, and also the nationwide coverage. But there's more areas that we can explore as well. So, for example, the architecture and making sure, you know, by design from conception, it's, for, it's built for flexibility, but also resilience as well but also how we need to build in backup, that embedded mm. backup, um, embedded solutions. And again, I think what we've seen there, bringing those areas together makes a massive difference. And we've seen some, again, some amazing um, benefits from investing in this. One of which is, for example, major out outages being reduced, the chance of that by around 35%. So again, really, really interesting development. Another one uh, that really caught my eye too, again, software-defined networking and the use of intelligent routing. And again, it's that quest for agility, isn't it? It's giving that active yeah. intelligence yeah. to do the right decisions, to really react to customer demands and do that really consistently and reliability. Um, but also the use of new uh, newer emergent technologies coming together, say AI and machine learning for network traffic forecasting. And it literally is, I remember this on the day, billions of measurements every <laughs> single hour that the at and network is taking. It's quite staggering. Um, but yeah, I think three words, it's continual service improvement, isn't it, that's being invested in here, which is fantastic to see. Yeah, and that sort of brings us to, uh, I think it was my favorite day, day three. We got, I got to see, or we got to see Teresa Lannerwitz again. I tell you, she spoke Amazing. on the Biz Talks uh, recently. And during, during that discussion, she really focused on the erosion of IT silos and, and how businesses really are doing a lot of cross collaboration. And, and this drives cyber resilience, <clears throat> you know, back to the whole theme of RSA is, is better together. I mean, if you are collaborating 
uh, you can actually improve your, your cyber security. But key to that, key to collaboration is really the network. And, and network resilience will harden an organization's security posture. Absolutely. As we said before, you know, security is the network, if you see what mm -hmm. I mean. I, I think that's where we're heading. I could not agree more strongly. And particularly when we consider things um, in terms of constant change and constant raising of expectations and behaviours and the, the consistency of increased data traffic and usage as well, roughly 23% year over year increases yeah. in that alone. Wow. Obviously, as we're moving yeah. with greater acceleration of 5G, but also to 6G, et cetera, in the future as well, the data volume is only going to increase, isn't it? So, how That's we make the best optimization of that massively you know? yeah yeah oh gosh Absolutely, absolutely critical. Um, and you're right there about Teresa. What an amazing um, <laughs> uh, hey, um, tech person, women in tech, but just an amazing ambassador. Her speech um, at the booth was amazing. I love mm -hmm. the energy. Just really brought everybody around that, and you know, it really is the embodiment of, of of expertise that knows business. I would say. Um, and again, you mentioned there around key themes of the event, and I think the Cybersecurity Insight Report, um, the AT and T um, Cybersecurity produced there was super interesting as well. I think it's about the thirteenth in the row, and got a lot of insights there that can be supportive for the audience too. But one that caught my eye from that research is really the fact that enterprises now are looking for that balance in terms of mm -hmm. where they're investing and particularly security and edge. That was kind of one of the big takeaways from that. But as you mentioned as well, how network reliability is absolutely an imperative for business today. And, you know, to access that critical data when it's needed the most. Um, the reliability of 5G came out to the fore. And obviously, as we mentioned earlier, 5G embedded by design with some inbuilt security. So those were three of the big areas to come around from that. And maybe one other talking point as well. Um, I'm going to rephrase the narrative. I, I, have a, okay. I have a thing about that kind of reclaiming narratives, but you know, we've caught so much about the cost of investment, don't we? Um, we do that all the time, but I think when it comes to things like security and cybersecurity, I think we should just talk about that in a different way. It's the cost of insecurity. I think we need to be talking about more, not the other way around, you know, and I yeah. think AT&T's uh, leadership yeah. position here is really um, very impressive. Over a thousand security-related patents just speaks volume. Um, um, for the investment in this area, which means so much to so many, you know, not just enterprises, but families, home life, everybody is affected by that. You know, organizations of all sizes are so great to see that investment and support. I like the way you made that your own, Sally. <laughs> 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 but uh, the, the other thing is that the, the perimeter, uh, you know, the cyber threat really is increasing uh, in both com in complexity. Um, especially with the, the rise of hybrid cloud. And we talked about earlier about how the um, network is critical when you're doing um, multi-cloud and, and hybrid IT um, operations. And, and this has been driven by all the different work from home or work from anywhere options. Because uh, you have to, you never know what, where you're going to be when you're working and you never know what device or applications that, that you, you need to use. And the integrated converge solutions that AT&T has really delivered to the market gives you both that fixed and mobile network to help customers respond quickly to these dynamic changes. You know, like I said, I mean, I really didn't know I'd be out in LA today, and but I'm able to you know, do this show no matter where I am. This adaptable network with real-time vulnerability detection and, and threat analysis yields better investigative re results if something does happen. So you have these protective actions that are um, uh, timely and effective to, to any network security events should an attack occur. So, so true. I mean, that adaptability, you made me smile then, Kevin, because I remember a LinkedIn <laughs> Live that we, we did when I was in a lift. Um, yeah, and, and yeah from anywhere. Exactly. Whole, whole meaning, yeah. An acceleration in, in requirements, quite literally there, I think. But, wow. uh, but it shows, we've, we've, shown, we've shown the art of the possible made real. We have, haven't we? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and you reminded me of another area that came to the fore, I think, um, during RSA, but also massively beyond that as well, which is the power of the ecosystem. You know, the power of the, the collective and collaboration to, to negate some of these threats and challenges. Working and together again. Sessions, 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Stronger together. Definitely, definitely. And you know, we saw that in one of the sessions, didn't we, that we went to, um, for example, the XDR session, which was looking oh, at yes. the impact of security and network operations and the collaboration there. So we had AT&T business there, um, but also we had, oh, sorry, AT&T cybersecurity, but also representatives from Sentinel One um, and Avanti as well. And mm-hmm. I loved the collaborative role of sharing there. I loved how the, the alignment of complementary fits came together. And it was a great vision around the future security. So I wanted to mention that too, because again, it's a great example of right organizations coming together, trusted partnership, really benefiting yes. um, the community and, and businesses of all sizes. And of course, there was the Bloomberg um, interview as well. Uh, the special report that also came out on, on day three. And I love the focus there. And again, for, for anybody who didn't see it, definitely recommend catching that. I'm sure we can, can send a link across a bit later on as well. But broadly speaking, it was looking at the areas of, for example, generative AI, one of the biggest topics of our, of our time right now. But the impact of that on the cybersecurity industry, but also the impact of cloud, um, the transformational impact of cloud on business too. And what struck me was it was about a 70% mark of respondents saying that top of mind is their number one concern, their leading concern Mm. was security. So it shows really, I think, the elevation of security. Um, It's almost a level of performance today now, isn't it? You know, consumers aren't um, not discerning, should we say, between how they connect. It's about their their concern is the connection being, you know, reliable and secure and fast. So I think that's a really interesting change that came forward to me from that particular interview. You know, enterprise customers need it. They need better solutions that have that reliability, safety and security. And that's what AT&T is really focusing on. But that need massively came to the fore there. We need that integrating converged solution that AT&T is providing. What's really unique, I think, is how AT&T is embedding the security capabilities into the network. And it gives you visibility across both the wireless and the fixed uh, network, uh, this adaptable network. And as you said before, it's really powered by machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, it gives you that real time vulnerability detection and threat analysis. You know, this is, this is really important in today's dynamic world where, you know, everyone's against you in the cyber world where you gotta protect yourself. Um, so, so this sort of brings us to, to day four. I, I, I tell you, it went so fast when we were there. It really did. It was almost as fast as the speed of change that we're talking about today, isn't it? It really, it really was. It, it kind of whiz, it whizzed by. It really, really did. And and day four, again, a really another interesting day. I think for me, probably the, 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 the go live really around the Wall Street Journal special edition was a particular oh, highlight yes. that day. Really, really interesting. And it just, again, in terms of what kind of came out as key highlights from that, it was network reliability right up there as a C-suite priority it's today. That well. absolutely came to the fore. But also just how far things have changed and there were a couple of stats that caught my eye then so so if we went back in time to 2010 mm. gosh that seemed that does seem a long time ago now yeah, it's a long it? time but, ago <laughs> <laughs> it, it was showing kind of almost half and half so it was about 51 percent of enterprises using cloud in some form or another um mm-hmm. and most critical um applications being kind of locally hosted so if we go back to 2010 that's where we are go back forward not quite to 2023 but based on that research to 2022 mm-hmm. it was a hundred percent of enterprises dependent on that cloud access and also applications too. And alongside that, obviously, as we mentioned earlier, we've got the network requirements going up, more and more traffic, more need for speed, as we as we mentioned during the yes. event. All of those yes. are just accelerating and coming together and coming together. And now so much more hosting being remote, obviously, as well. So we've got these millions of connections needed over thousands of miles to the cloud every single day. And obviously supporting that is an imperative. It needs that new standard networking we've been talking about today. And for me, and I know for you too, Kevin, it is this pairing, is this fiber and 5G coming together. It's complementary strengths working together. And it's giving you that more dependent business operations, wherever you are, whether you're in a lift, whether you're in Las Vegas, yeah, whether you're, exactly. whether you're in London, you know, it's bringing us all closer. It's giving that holistic support end to end. And for me, it's also enabling, uh, sorry, enabling kind of leveling up, I would describe it as really. Mm-hmm. So you've got bandwidth coming together with reduced latency and also that intelligent routing of traffic we spoke about earlier too. For me, that is kind of max performance at the maximum available speed, which is where we should be heading. And of course, making sure that's all integrated in a system that's delivering all of those different benefits, but has network security embedded from the very start. That's the holistic coming together for me. And and kind of day four brought those themes in that converge point, I think. 
yeah, you know, you were uh, on the uh, the trip to the past, right? <laughs> Be, yes. and it's kind of hard to imagine any business uh, not leveraging the cloud today, but you know, uh, because today, if you don't have cloud, you probably don't have business. And if you don't have a network, you don't have access to the cloud. So the thing that RSA taught me was the importance of ensuring that your business has a strong network partner capable of providing that secure and reliable network. Uh, this combined combination of fiber and 5G wireless that you can get to your information, get to your applications, get to your data, no matter where you are, no matter what device that you're using, and that you have the bandwidth to, to do the business that, that needs to be done. I, I really, uh, wow, it, it's amazing how uh, business has changed in just short, such a short time. Absolutely. I mean, can you imagine, you know, back in 2010 and that example we gave then, <laughs> the pandemic had happened then and where we, where we were uh, from a connectivity perspective, it'd be a completely mm -hmm. different picture, wouldn't it? I mean, really, really so. Great examples there, Kevin. And I think as well, a uh, recommendation to the audience to have a look at the at and business page for more resources then, because whether it's cloud or ID, um, IT disaster recovery or that use of AI machine learning we were talking about as well, all those different elements, there's so many resources there um, to dive in. Into. So definitely recommend looking at that and just thinking aloud a little bit more as well about some of these themes coming together. I think it also shows as well that importance of, of trusted partnership for your business in a whole range of areas. So your network mm -hmm. partner kind of needs to bring together, obviously, the security we've talked about today, but I'll, I'll do some more S's. So, uh, so <laughs> scalability. <laughs> I have a thing with that, as, as our audience probably is aware. So um, security, absolutely up there. Uh, support and gain that trusted partnership, the experts who know business, I think really kind of embodies that, but also scalability, simplicity as well, because mm -hmm. that's another challenge for so many organizations as well. Um, and then I have to um, mention two that aren't an S, I think, and that would be <laughs> I <never asked. laughs> I think we've, Yeah, we've, we've seen a lot of examples of that today. I think it's so, so important, you know, particularly as needs and expectations and behaviors continue to evolve, you know, whether you're a customer, an employee, a stakeholder, partner, we're seeing all that change and you need to have a network partner that kind of changes with you and helps you grow as you do and can be React, react to react to all these different vectors of change. So really, really excited about that. And I think AT&T Business really generally encapsulates that very vision. Here's another S for you. A superb relationship <laughs> with AT&T. I mean, they have 147 like years. <laughs> 140 <laughs> year heritage, you know, of, of innovation. And it's set to continue, you know. So I really appreciate you taking the time with me uh, to, to discuss uh, our three a day in, in San Francisco, uh, Sally. Unfortunately, our, our time is coming to an end. But, you know, I always like uh, to give our guests an opportunity to reach out to the audience so that the audience can reach out to them. So so how can somebody reach, get in touch with you if they have more questions about the importance of security in the network. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Always a pleasure. We, we could always talk for twice as long, if, if not more, <laughs> can we? Absolutely. Yes. And, uh, yeah. For everyone watching and listening at the moment, honestly, my door is open. I'd love to continue the conversations that Kevin and I have had today. Um, and honestly, I, I'm available in most places. So link, LinkedIn would be a good place. Um, Tomorrow's Tech Today, the podcast, website, and YouTube, um, and across all social media at, at Sally Eves. I got to say, I mean, I love your podcast, uh, Tomorrow's Tech Thank Today. You. It gives it really a, uh, gives you the foresight to understand what you have to prepare for, what you and your C-suite colleagues should be discussing. So, but in, in closing, I'd like to invite everyone to check out the wide variety of industry thought leadership that we have here at Digital Transformers and SupplyChainNow.com. Uh, you can find Digital Transformers uh, wherever you get your podcast. You can get Tomorrow's Tech Today there as well. So be sure to, to subscribe to both. You get a twofer. So on behalf Excellent. of <laughs> so on behalf of the entire team here at Supply Chain Now, this is Kevin L. Jackson wishing all of our listeners a bright and transformational future. 
We'll see you next time on Digital Transformers. Thank you for supporting Digital Transformers and for being a part of our global Supply Chain Now community. Please check out all of our programming at supplychainnow.com. Make sure you subscribe to Digital Transformers anywhere you listen to or view the show. And follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next time on Digital Transformers.